Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hone this harmonic balancer. Most of these aftermarket harmonic balancers need to be honed to fit on the crank snout correctly. I mean, you could get it on there, but it's just way too tight. So this is a procedure we use. So we're gonna use a rod hone. We're gonna get a little bit of hone oil on the mandrel. Now, if you were doing this and you, you weren't used to doing these often, you'd want to measure these. Uh, I pretty much know how much has got to come out of the balancer so it'll fit on there. So this is the procedure. That's about what it takes right there for this professional products balancer to go on there. Like I said, you'd want to measure it if you didn't do these all the time, but I know that that's going to give us a good fit right there. Okay, you can see where we've honed the balancer. Yeah, you can see the hone marks in it. We like to run about seven ten thousandths press on this. Video number eight in our series on how to build a 620 horsepower pump gas big block Chevy. We have uh, the crankshaft that you saw in our previous videos mounted up in the Heinz balancer. We've got the harmonic balancer installed. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make up the bob weights from the piston weight and the rod weights. And we're going to show you how we do it. Okay, before we get into the balancing, I just wanted to go over our rod setup and piston setup again. First, we took a production rod. We took about 30 grams out of it between the small end and the big end. We resized it. We checked the small end for press. We took, like I said, 30 grams total roughly off the rods. So we got a good amount of, good amount of weight off the rods. And then on the piston, we pretty much always use a mall piston. Very consistent. You always get the same thing from mall every time. Uh, these are a 1.5, 1.5, 3-millimeter ring pack piston. Uh, they're pretty low drag as far as drag in the cylinder goes. Uh, this dome is 28 cc's. We take and we deburr these edges, just get the sharp edges off of them. And then we take this tool steel wrist pin that we have custom made and we run that in this piston to get a little more weight out of it. So basically, this is what we're running for a piston. We're going to come in. We're going to come in between 10.3 and 10.5 on the compression. Okay, I'm going to get into how we figure our bob weight weights off of the weights of the pistons and rods and the other components in the motor. First of all, what we'll do is, is we go through, go on the scale, weigh every component individually. With the way the piston, the wrist pin, piston rings, the small end of the rods, big end of the rods, our rod bearings themselves, and then we have a, a constant that we use for the, the amount of oil, and that's five grams. All these weights are figured in grams. Now, our formula to figure out our bob weights, to, to see what we need to do, we take our piston weight, plus the wrist pin weight, plus the piston ring weight, plus the small end of the rod weight that give, add all those numbers together gives us our re reciprocating weight. Now after we figure that we want to figure out the rotating weight and that formula is the big end of the rod plus the rod bearing add those two numbers together multiply that answer by two and then we add in our, our five grams for the oil constant. That gives us our rotating weight. After we have those two, the reciprocating and the rotating weight, we take those two numbers, add them together, divide by two, and that equals our half bob weight. And then obviously we take our half bob weight times two to get the total bob weight the half bob weight's real important because when we assemble the bob weights, we do them one half at a time. 
and then you can see that we've already went through weighed everything out we don't want to bore you guys with all that but um, basically we came up with 633 grams for a piston weight added our wrist pin in of 126.6 plus the piston rings which was 37.6 plus the small end of the rod 217.3 that gives us 1014.6 grams that's our reciprocating weight now down here we have 585 our rod big end weight plus 43.1 our rod bearing weight add those together times by two add our five for the oil come up with 1262.2 grams for rotating weight take our reciprocating weight 1014.6 plus our 1262.2 rotating weight add those divide by two we get 1138.4 grams which is our half bob weight which is what we will be using when we assemble our half bob weights and we're going to show you that next and our total bob weight on this build is going to be 2276.8 and that's all in grams and um, we're going to show you how we put these bob weights together and, and go into the next part of the video on balancing what we have here is our half bob weight in the balancing station and basically we have a kit with different weights in that kit that we can put together to get to the target weight which in this case is 1138.4 so now we'll move on to setting these up on the crankshaft okay we've got our crank mounted in the balancer we've got our bob weights mounted and these are the bob weights that we weighed and showed you the half bob weights this is one half this is the other half they bolt together as you can see the stud comes through here and it's screwed together and what we do is we set this crankshaft up so the number one throw is the furthest up and what I mean by that is this is at the top of its travel then we lock 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 the crankshaft in place with a drill bit on the flex plate you got that so at that point we're able to set up our bob weights and what we do is we want to space all these bob weights out from this front radius on the crank here 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 and here the same amount so we use a 3 8 drill bit okay once we've got that in place we have to level these bob weights and to do that we use this this level okay so we would level this bob weight here then from there we would move over to this bob weight and we use a socket to level this one then we would move to this bob weight level it then of course the back bob weight so we've got all these leveled and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bolt in the counterweight that goes in the harmonic balancer and that's this piece right here you got that okay it's important to notice that this starts out at 432 and a half grams what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to balance this thing with this counterweight, with this counterweight that bolts into the harmonic balancer, and with this counterweight on the back flex plate. You got that? We do not want a bunch of holes in the front and rear counterweight. I'm thinking that we're probably going to end up having to weld some of these counterweight holes up. And again, we will try to take the weight 
out of the front counterweight and the rear counterweight. By taking the weight out up here, it's going to take stress off this snout. Very important. Okay, we're ready to balance. Ultimately, we want to end up with as little bit of weight out of this counterweight as possible. We want to get it right dead center in the counterweight right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the center line of the crankshaft to this radius, or counterweight I should say. So we know that the front journal is 2.740. We're going to divide that by 2. That's going to give us 1, one inch 370 thousandths from the center of this crank snout to this journal. Then we're going to add the distance from this counterweight to the journal. Right in the center of the counterweight. Which is 2 inch 20 thousandths, so plus 2.020. That's going to give us 3.390. So we're going to go over to the setup. cursor over there. We're going to put in 3.3 hold on here 3.390 okay so we've got that in. Now, okay we're going to come back to the rear counterweight again we want to get the weight ultimately out of the center of this counterweight, dead center. So again, we're going to measure from the center line of the crankshaft to the top of this counterweight. which is 3.4 inches. So we're going to come over here and enter it in the rear, the rear radius. see that? Now we're going to come back to the screen. And we're going to set this front plane, which I know is inch and a quarter. I'll show you what that distance is here, what that measurement is. Okay, we've entered the front plane, and that is the distance from the center of the front main to the center of the front counterweight. And you can see we've entered it there, which is an inch 250. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna switch back over to the screen and spin the crank. Okay. 